Hey everyone, this is Madhusudan Raj, your host, and I'm back again with my economic reports. Uh, last Tuesday, the RBI, the Central Bank of India, uh, again announced its quarterly monetary policy review in which Mr. Raghura Rajan reduced the repo rate by a big 50 basis point. Uh, he was under tremendous pressure from the finance minister and obviously from the prime minister Narendra Modi, the finance minister Arun Jaitley and also the uh, corporate, you know, honchos, uh, people like Adani's and Ambani's and Tata's and Dilla's and the Jads. These corporatists, you know, they were pressurizing him to reduce the rate. So ultimately, Raghuram Rajan gave in to this pressure and he reduced the repo rate by 50 basis point. So, uh, what is you know important today? Why I'm here is you know I want to discuss uh, you know some of the the kind of economics that Mr. Raghuram Rajan is doing. You know, in the in the in the popular you know uh, culture, means in the media and. Uh, in the popular circles, you know, in the finance circle, Raghura Rajan is basically known as uh, as what they call the monetary policy hawk or what they call the inflation warrior. People think because you know he frequently comes up with his you know speeches and with his statements in the media that he doesn't like inflation. He's single-mindedly you know focused on bringing down inflation in the Indian economy. He thinks that. Inflation is a very dangerous phenomena. So, what I want to do today is I want to kind of uh, uh, see how serious Raghura Rajan is about you know combating inflation. Whether he actually is an inflation warrior. Not only that, uh, immediately after he announced this uh, monetary policy review, he gave an interview to uh, one of the newspapers, the Hindu, in which he gave a kind of a very very a uh, startling uh, statement. He said that common man always benefits from a rate cut. So I also want to scrutinize and analyze this particular statement of Mr. Ram Ram Rajan and whether the interest rate cut by the RBI is always going to benefit the common man. Why he's saying that? That we will see in a while into his, you know, uh, interview answers, uh, but before I do that, before I analyze this statement of Rajan, this startling statement of Rajan that rate could always benefit common man, let us see whether Raghuram Rajan actually is an inflation warrior. If we see uh, his you know, tenure as the RBI governor, he assumed the position around mid-September in 2013 and after that only for twice, couple of times, he increased the repo rate from something like 7.5% to 8% and immediately after that, he has started reducing the repo rate from 8% now, you know, 8% the peak period in January 2014. In one and a half years time period, Rajan has reduced the rate by 1.25 basis point. That means from 8% to 6. Uh, 75 percent, which is its you know present level. So he has reduced the rate by 1.25 basis point, and by doing that, what he has done is that he has you know, basically created more inflation. Because you have to understand Rajan's definition, because Rajan belongs to the mainstream economics tradition, he is a Keynesian basically economist. So he thinks that rising the general price level is inflation. He talks about price inflation. But if we see the you know original and the true definition of inflation, that inflation is not uh, rising the general price level. In fact, there is no phenomena like a general price level. Prices are always related. Individual prices are there which are relating with other commodities. So there is nothing like general price level. And in any case, you know money cannot measure value. Money cannot measure prices because money is itself is a commodity, it, it itself has its own value, it itself has its own price in terms of purchasing power which is continuously fluctuating so you cannot use you know money prices as some kind of yardstick for measuring the value right so because it itself is fluctuating it is not a unit of measurement for measuring value well you cannot be measured because 
it is subjective and something that is intensive subjective in your brain it cannot be measured so let apart this fundamental you know problems with uh, his definition uh, you know even you know if we go by that he has reduced the interest rate and by doing that what he has done is he is, he is basically creating more inflation right? because this reduction in market interest rate is going to flood the economy with you know new money new currency notes rupees and the moment in, there will be increase in the you know supply of you know rupees what will happen its purchasing power will go down and that is what the one of the chief effects of inflation you know reduction in the purchasing power of rupees uh, and because of that, it's going to buy less and less amount of other, you know, commodities, you know, other, other consumer, you know, goods and producers' goods. So that is what is raising the price. You know, price rise is one of the effects, chief effects of inflation. It itself is not an inflation. Uh, inflation is rise in the supply of money and credit as originally truly defined by the economics before 1980s when they started changing the definition from the true cause of inflation to the effects of inflation. So he's not an inflation warrior because he is you know, reducing the interest rate whenever the government, his masters sitting in Delhi are <coughs> wanting him to uh, you know, reduce it. Remember I'm saying his masters because the Reserve Bank of India, the Central Bank of India is wholly owned by the government. If you go on RBI's you know, website and check about about us, then you find that it's wholly owned by the government of India. So it is government's bank, basically. Basically, so Finance Minister Arun Jaitley and Prime Minister Narendra Modi, they are masters of you know uh, Raghuram Rajan. So he has to listen to them. So he's not an inflation warrior. In fact, he's created more inflation. Now, what is going to happen? Now, let's let's check this you know statement of Rajan that the rate cut is always going to be an effect you know the common man first thing you know he's you know uh, these uh, hindu you know newspaper is asking him a similar question let's see what he is replying and then i will you know kind of analyze his you know reply the rate cut is likely to affect depositors how they would be compensated so rajan is answering this question I think bringing down inflation is the most proper move we have done. Once inflation comes down, keeping rates at a very high level increases the cost for the entire economy. I receive letters periodically from pensioners who say that they, they used to get 10% uh, on their deposit but now they are getting only 8%. However, they don't realize that they, they got 10% when the inflation was 11%. Even though they got 10% returns, their principal was zero to greater amount every year. So real value saving are going down. Today, if they are getting 8% with inflation at 6 or 5.5%, they're getting a real return of 2.5%, which is compensating the erosion of the principal. So real returns have gone up. <laughs> so, so what he's saying is that because the inflation numbers have gone down, so it doesn't matter if the depositors' rates are going to come. See, because when what happens is when the RBI is going to reduce the rate, the banks will have a pass on that as a lower rates on the borrowing. So the loan rates are going to decline. Now, banks on their profit uh, in that margin which they have for lending rate and the depositors rate which they have to give to the depositors the saving you know class company so if they are going to reduce the lending rate they will also reduce to maintain the profit margin they will also reduce the depositors rate so what rajan is saying that because the inflation rate has gone down doesn't matter if the you know rate is coming down he thinks that the real rate of interest is kind of you know in positive territory but all this is true only if we believe the government's inflation numbers Right, and if, if we know, you know, there are three types of lies, lies, damn lies, and statistics. Remember that the, the measurement of inflation is a highly dubious exercise. It only focuses on the very aggregate level, you know, data, and obviously aggregation will hide so much of, you know, differences in individual lifestyles. So, for example, first thing, the first problem with inflation number is that it focuses on the wholesale price index, where obviously the prices are lower. Even if you consider that they are going to kind of use uh, the consumer price index, the basket of commodities that they include into their calculation is very, very, you know, selective. It is the government bureaucrats and the politicians and central bankers like Raghuram Rajan 
and uh, statisticians, government statisticians, they determine what kind of commodities they are going to include into inflation measurement basket. So, for example, if I am using, you know, one type of milk and because there are different types of milk available in the market and if RBI is including other type of milk you know into their basket and the milk that I'm consuming that that milk you know, price is going up but the milk that they you know the RBI and the statisticians have included into their bar basket if its price is going down then obviously the you know WPI and CPI is going to you know show lower numbers but it has very real you know impact on my life my life in reality is you know really miserable because I am continuously paying higher prices and anybody goes to you know shop in the market every day they, they know that the prices of you know, most of the item almost 99% of the items is just going up year over year nothing has come down the prices have never really come down on ground reality you know I read one article where many of the housewives in Mumbai are complaining that Rajan is saying that the inflation has gone down, but we don't see the impact of that on our lives. We have to continue continuously pay higher prices for everything, and we have to tighten our belt. And our budgets are very much household budgets are very much strained. So it, it all depends on how the government is. You know, government statisticians are measuring inflation, and as I said, you know, it's very highly selective exercise. It doesn't take the disaggregate, you know, different lifestyles of individual people. It, it, it is very much possible that millions of people are consuming some other items which are not in the basket, right, which the government is using, you know, to measure the, to track the prices and out of that calculate the wholesale price index and the consumer price index. So, you know, and, and, and their own, you know, index numbers, you know, wholesale price index and CPI is quite, you know, different. So obviously it depends on how you see that and in any case you know most of the people are not pensioners he says that many pensioners are writing with this but what about the poor people who have no pension and nothing who have absolutely fixed income what they are what they are saying is you know their you know their their start of living is continuously going down because on one side their wages are not rising their daily wage earners and on the other side the prices of commodities are continuously rising See, recently, I think since the last couple of months, the price of onion is continuously going up. So in that kind of situation, how can we say that inflation has gone down? If the price of onion is going up, which is kind of a staple food for most of the people in this country, how can we say that the inflation number has gone down? So Rajan Zeno reply that because the inflation is 6% and the return is, you know, 8%, so your, your real rate of interest is 2%. It is all a very kind of, you know, it's very on phony arguments. It all depends on how you calculate inflation. And in any case, as I said, you know, you know, calculating inflation itself is a dubious exercise because the definition which they are using is, you know, price rise. And price rise is not inflation. Inflation is basically increasing the supply of money and credit. And if you see that, that increase in the supply of money and credit is, you know, going up by 9%, 10%, 11 15 17% since many years. There is no reduction whatsoever in that. So it's a sustained inflation. Continuously our standard of living is getting eroded year after year. Not only that, so he is very insensitive to the you know, plight of the people of this country. See, not only the price rise, see, if you understand what, what inflation actually is, which is, as I said, is a rise of, you know, uh, supply of money and credit, then it, the, one of the chief effects is price rise. But the other very dangerous sinister effects are it generates the boom and burst cycle, the business cycle, recession, boom, recession, boom, recession, depression. And the other one is the increase in you know, income and wealth inequality. One thing is this that, and, and when there is boom and burst cycle, it definitely is going to destroy the capital and production structure of the economy. So in the end, when the recession will arrive, right now, the you know, already the economy is into recession. Right? And to bring that you know, economy out, they're calling about deflation, deflation, the price are coming down. And they're only coming down on their books. So if the, you know, this deflation, this recession is, it's nothing natural. It's because of the prior artificial boom. If there is no prior artificial boom, then there is no recession and there is no deflation. So RBI Rajan himself, they are, you know, himself is creating this boom and bus cycle. So boom and bus cycle is not going to help anyone. How can he say that rate cut is going to you know, always benefit the common man? No, it's not going to benefit the common It's not even going to benefit the politicians. Because when the economy will tank and the markets will tank because of the artificial boom, ultimately it's going to result into recession. When that will happen, they're going to lose their you know, you know, seats, the power seats. They're going to lose their elections. 
and Rajan is also going to lose his reputation and everything when the you know boss will finally arrive. It is already here. He is just pumping more money by reducing the interest rate, and he's just trying to revive the bubble. He's just blowing another bubble. So one bubble after another bubble is bursting, and economy is stagnating. Capital structure is completely destroyed. Productive production, productive structure is destroyed. The productive people of this country, the saver class, the creditor class, are punished because of this, you know, rate, you know, a cut. And Raj, Rajan had the truth power saying that this rate cut is always going to benefit the common man. No, Mr. Ragura, Rajan, it is not going to benefit anyone in the end. You understand that very clearly, right? Because this is what is generating the boom and bust cycle. And you are focused on inflation, but the big effect of your manipulation of the market interest rate is the boom and bust cycle, and that is what is damaging the Indian economy and the productive, the whole productive structure. It is not going to benefit anyone, you know, let apart the common man. And he also said that this will, you know, help in kickstarting the investment cycle. So he basically confuses, you know, he doesn't understand economic science, I think. He doesn't understand the fourth proposition of John Stuart Mill that the demand for consumer goods is not demand for labor. If you invest, see, what you require in order to employ more and more labor is more and more investment. And more and more investment will only come forward if there is prior saving of real resources. And if you're going to save, you can consume. And if, you, if you're going to consume your resources, you cannot save. So if you cannot save, you cannot hire the laborers. So increased demand is not going to result into increased demand for laborers. Increased demand for the commodities, consumer goods is not going to result into increased demand for the laborers. Actually, it is going to decrease the demand for laborers. Okay? But, so he doesn't understand the whole capital structure and how the economy is working. He's saying that lowering interest rate is to increase demand and the other ways to increase demand is to cut prices. Both have to work together to increase demand. Once demand increases, it consumes more capacity, so entrepreneurs will increase their capacity utilization. Once demand you know, starts, people will be eager to invest. Little more demand will prompt people to invest more. Once they are eager to invest, they create a demand of its own. Industry has to participate in the Prime Minister and it calls industry to invest. This is the season investment will pick up. As I said, he doesn't understand. If you're going to increase demand, what's going to happen is that much of you know less ceiling is available. Increased demand for consumers could that much less capital is available in order to you know you know work with the production, and that much less saving is available to hire the laborers. So no, commodities demand is not going to increase labor's demand. So I think he he's he's his Keynesian ideas are fundamentally wrong and flawed. And his rate cut decision is not going to benefit anyone in the end. He is just creating more inflation. He's not an inflation warrior. And what he is basically doing is he's creating more, you know, further, you know, boom and bust cycles, which will, you know, basically damage the Indian economy very badly. And, and that will, you know, really reduce the standard of living of everyone, you know, especially the common man. So that's it, you know, that is what I wanted to discuss today because Raghuram, and he was, he is also becoming very arrogant. He said that I'm Raghuram Raj and I do what I do. The central bankers can talk like this because they are not going to be held accountable for their actions, right? They can destroy millions of people's lives via this monetary policy decisions and instead of, you know, getting punished and going to the jail, they will be given all kind of accolades, Nobel Prizes and Bharat Ratna and other such awards by the government. So these guys, these policy makers, they can behave arrogantly and they can, you know, give such statements because they know that they are not going to face the punishment. These guys have no accountability whatsoever. Once his tenure is over, he will go back to his professorship. Nobody is going to put him behind the bars because he's destroying millions of people's lives. Right? So he's becoming also very arrogant, you know. So no, he's not an inflation warrior and his rate cut is not going to affect anyone. You guys will have to now <clears throat> be very careful because this further reduction in the rampo rate is just going to create, not just accelerate the, you know, and all the problems that we are already having. The rate cut itself was the cause of the today's, you know, bust and this rate cut will, you know, result in the future bust again. So you guys, you know, take care of yourself and I'll come back again and discuss other important issues as they go on happening in the Indian economy. Right now, the world economies are facing big problems. 
the Fed, U.S. Federal Reserve did not increase the rates because they are worried so much. The day they will, there will be a big bloodbath into the markets and the economies will collapse like anything. So we have to continue to watch all these things. I will keep an eye and I'll keep on informing you guys. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.